When pre-flighting a Learjet, you first need to know what type of Learjet you're looking at. Looks like today I'll be showing you how to pre-flight a Learjet Citation Bravo. This one's made by Cessna and it combines the luxury of a modern jet with the speed of a Cessna 172. When pre-flighting a Learjet, you always want to start at the front because this is the part of the plane that starts flying first. Right up here is where you keep all the stuff. And uh, these here, these are safety seals. Here's a safety seal. If these seals are broken, well, um, I, I, I wouldn't use the stuff. Down here you can see we've got the Peter tube. It's a device that's used to measure the wind speed or something. It just says top here so you know which side you're looking at. I'm certain if we get underneath it, it will say uh, bottom so you can, uh, mm, nope. Dang it. Down here you got one of these, um, this, it's a, um, and so, and you got, you have two of them so that the plane can, and if, if you only have one, uh, so then what you want to do is go to the other side of the plane because most Learjets have uh, an onboard toilet. And, and like most toilets, this, this one leaks. Probably should get a, a, a plumber to take a look at that. The leading edge of the Learjet is mostly made of black rubber. It's a little bumper so bugs will, will bounce off. Uh, you see, see where it ends? Bugs. On the bumper? No bugs. You can see here the Learjet's equipped with a Newton separator. It forces the Newton air down and the Bernoulli air over the top because if those uh, two air masses meet, it, uh, it causes arguments on the internet. Right here is where the usable fuel goes. If you have unusable fuel, you cannot put it in here. This is for usable fuel only. This divider here keeps the pilot from seeing the lights on the end of the wing. Otherwise, at night, uh, he might see the lights and think another plane has gotten too close, and no matter what he does, he can't, can't get away from it. It's, uh, it's very scary, and so this solves that problem. Here on the back of the wing, you can see we have this. This is, um, uh, it, so on the top, we can see it says uh, ground under wing. Uh, you always want to check and make sure the ground is under the wing. Otherwise, it means the plane is upside down, which complicates things. Uh, and just to further illustrate this, I'm certain if we get underneath the wing, it will say sky above wing on the bottom. Uh, nope. This here is one of the turning flaps. You want to make sure that it's... Uh, and then you want to check the sub flap. This one here, you want to make sure that it feels smooth on your hand. Uh, over here, as we get closer to the body, we have the main flap. This is a type of flap called a flower flap. I'm not sure why they, they call it that. It's just what it is. Up here on top, we have what's called a perforated flap. Uh, what you want to do is fill this area down here with bubble solution and then you can flip these up in flight and it leaves a trail of bubbles behind the, you know what, that, uh, that, that, that can't be right. You, you, look, you just want to make sure it's full of holes. Never step on that. You can see, see someone stepped on it, look, now it's broken. This here is the engine holder. What you want to do is you want to touch this panel lightly to make sure that it's there. If we come around here, we can see the business end of the engine. This one appears to be idling. If you need to tow a glider or a banner, they have this. It's an aftermarket add-on for towing ops. Uh, ops is short for operations. As I mentioned before, this plane's idling. If it weren't already running, you could reach in there and hand prop it. Um, that's tough, though, because then you have to quickly run around to the cockpit before the plane gets away from you. However, since the engine's already running, we can check it and make sure it's okay. Uh, a running jet engine should always sound like a jazz drummer counting in before the sax player gets started. I forgot to mention earlier, sometimes you'll get over here uh, and you'll hear that the toilet's running. You just want to jiggle this and that usually takes care of it. All right, the outside looks good. Now let's go pre-flight the inside of the plane. Inside the plane, there's really only one thing that you actually need to jump. Looks like, uh, looks like this one, we're good to go. All right, that concludes the video talking about pre-flighting uh, the Citation 550. Um, Everything's ready to go. It's ready to be flown. Wonder, uh... I bet I could fly that. Nah, I'm not gonna do it. It would be easy. Let's find out. Texas traffic, clear Chad. Charlie Bravo, 5 for 5 or 0 departing runway 49er. VFR to the east. Up, up, and away. Last call. Peace out, Texas. Flying the Learjet was an absolutely lovely experience. I was VFR because I didn't want any trouble. 
and my instructor always says if you can see through it it isn't a cloud they look like clouds on the camera but i assure you i could see right through them trust me on that i didn't really have a plan so i just kept climbing until i started to feel a little bit funny uh, i think i got up to about 30,000 feet at one point it's really hard to tell though because the display in this thing was a little buggy All right, so let's address the elephant in the room. Some people are probably going to get upset that I borrowed this plane, but here's the deal. You can't just come to my house and drive my car away. Why? Because you don't have the keys. This plane doesn't need keys to start it. You just get in and start fidgeting with stuff and suddenly you're airborne. If they didn't want everyone to be able to fly it, they would have made it need keys in order to start. So probably not an issue just to hop in and take one for a joyride to New Mexico like I did. So I'm not super concerned about that. Once I broke out of the clouds, it started to get pretty bright in the airplane, so I decided to throw on a pair of Flying Eyes sunglasses. Dean from Flying Eyes gave me these last year at Oshkosh. It's the first pair of sunglasses that I haven't ever lost. It's fantastic. Not only are they durable, but you can't lose Flying Eyes sunglasses. It's impossible, or I would have lost them already. After flying around for a couple of hours, I decided I should probably land. I didn't realize the fuel's in pounds. I thought I had 6,000 gallons of fuel when I took off. Uh, but I think it was pounds. I don't know how much the fuel weighs. And so I thought, you know what, I should land uh, and do some math to see if my, my flying trip was over or if I could go back up. Um, so uh, the idea was I was going to I was going to land and find somebody who had a calculator and then someone who could tell me how much jet fuel weighs so I could find out uh, how to convert pounds to gallons because uh, I could have had a ton or I could have had none at this point. I just didn't know. So I want to say something real quick. If you are looking to transition uh, up to a little bit different plane or just borrow a plane, I think this Learjet Citation Bravo is a fantastic um, and, and easy to transition to plane. You saw me land it. It's super, super easy. It actually counted down the little robot voice as you're getting lower. And the trick to it's simple. When he says uh, 10 feet to go, you just turn the autopilot off and pull the power. It's got trailing link landing gear, so it's super springing. Uh, you you can't, can't have a bad landing. As soon as your wheels touch, there's these two things on the fr front of the throttles. You pull them up and they're thrust reversers and they slow the plane down. It's very, very, very simple. Um, I, I love the airplane. I, you know, Oshkosh is coming up. I actually thought for a second about actually borrowing it again and flying it to Oshkosh, but you know, quite frankly, my Comanche's faster, so I'm going to probably fly my own plane. The fuel's cheaper too. Um, I did uh, manage to find a guy in the field who knows how to do math and calculated how much fuel I had on board. I, Thought I might be out or, or full. I didn't know. Uh, he said basically you got two half tanks. Uh, I don't again. I don't remember it's gallons or pounds. He said it was cool to fly. I could probably get it back uh, back home. So I did. Uh, you know, fire it back up and take off and, and uh, head home. So the flight back home was pretty much the same as the flight out. The primary difference, I guess, is just you go in the opposite direction. Um, the takeoff was was uh, uneventful. It's very smooth. I think it was about 104 or 106 degrees on the ground. So once again, I opted to get up as high as I possibly could. Um, that did mean climbing up above some clouds. And I always like to kind of dip into the clouds a little bit because I think it's just fun to do that. Uh, one thing that I'd forgotten about was even though it was, you know, well over 100 degrees on the ground, 
30 or 40,000 feet up in the air, it gets pretty cold and you can see, uh, you know, ice starts to form all over the airplane. Um, you can see this ice, it's, uh, it's melting. Um, and I think that's because the plane's still really hot from being on the ground. So, uh, like I said, the plane was probably still hundreds of degrees from the sun shining on it. So, uh, you know, the ice forms and then right away it's like, ah, this is too hot, we're leaving. And so that's, that's what happened there. It was a pretty uneventful flight. I got back to where I was going. And you know, just like I told you before, you're gonna hear the robot counting down, telling me how many feet I've got left to go. Uh, and then, you know, when he says 10 feet to go, that's when you, you, you shut everything down and the plane will just uh, settle down on the runway. guys thanks for watching the video i appreciate you guys coming here you know you showed up because you wanted to learn to to pre-flight the learjet and you got to come along on a ride with me so uh, that's how that's how it is on this channel under promise and, and over i never promised anything actually it's always an over delivery uh so i hope you enjoyed that uh thank you guys for watching the videos and sharing and liking and doing all that great stuff thank you to the patreon supporters um who helped make this happen i really appreciate it so um you guys fly smart. We'll uh, catch you in the next one. And uh, depending on when you watch this video, I uh, hope to see you guys at Oshkosh. If for some reason you watch it later, I hope you had a great time. So uh, catch you guys in the next one. Click this link to see the most recent video upload. Click this link to see a video that YouTube thinks you might like. Click this link to subscribe to my channel.